My name is Lorraine Vano, and I will be narrating this presentation, which was written by my husband, Gerald. In a few minutes, you are going to be entering a realm that neither men of orthodox science nor orthodox religion have been able to enter. This realm is where science and the spirit merge and is a sacred place. The ancient Jews who taught the Kabbalah and sacred geometry, which is universal symbolism, worked in this realm. The main purpose of this presentation is to reveal the meaning or decoding of the Barbary Castle crop circle shown here. It appeared in a field in England on July 17, 1993. It has been realized since May 6, 1997, that the symbolism of some of the crop circles have been sacred geometry. This was discovered when a circle had the symbol of the traditional Kabbalistic tree of life, life shown here. Gerald is a retired electronics engineer, and in the 10 years of his retirement, has written three books. The first one shown here is entitled, The Coming Merger of Science and Religion. This book was published in 1990. The title of the next book shown here is, The Etheric Ocean, Doorway to Other Worlds. It was written in 1994. The title of the third book is, voice of the two signs. We want to talk about the etheric ocean first because it refers to UFOs. We will go into the other books later. For the past 50 years, Gerald has been very interested in UFOs. In 1992, he read a book entitled The Andreessen Affair. It is about a woman named Betty Andreessen, shown here, here who is a UFO abductee and has been abducted many times since she was a little girl. In the past few years, she's had five books written about her abductions. One of the recent titles shown here, here is The Watchers 2. In her first book, The Andrea Sinathea, it was said while she was being hypnotized, shown here, that her alien abductors started talking through her, first speaking in an unknown language, then in English. The scientists who were present were able to talk directly to the aliens through her and ask questions. The aliens would give clues to the questions asked about themselves and also the mysteries of the universe. They could not give specific answers to questions they said because mankind must be worthy of figuring them out for his own sake. The following discourse is quoted from part of the session as was written in the book. Here Betty speaks while under deep hypnosis. I don't know what it is. They're just saying it to me. I don't know what they are saying. Betty again broke into a foreign language. Then, base 32. Base 32. Signal. Base 32. Then, Fred Youngren speaks. Betty, can you tell us any more about that? Does that refer to a number or a place? Betty speaks. I don't know. Curvature. Curvature. Sombleado. Star. Ciso. Sombleado. Star. Ciso. She continued with more strange language. Further on, Betty speaks. Something about scientists must bury the past. Then Fred Youngren speaks. Say some more. Tell us some more. Betty speaks. There is an even flow. There are waves that are being sent out. And there are old walls that need to be broken down. David Webb speaks. Can you tell us more? Fred Youngren speaks. Does this relate to the formulas that they gave you? Or is this different? This is different. Something about circling the plane. Circle the plane. P-L-A-I-N. Count three and four. Count three and four. Counting three and four is very important. Fred Youngren speaks. Can you tell us what the three and four relate to? It's something about a door, and it's going to be opened. After reading all this in the book, Gerald started thinking about the clues base 32. Signal curvature, and it became clear what it meant. 
The aliens were referring to the planet Earth, which has an accelerating force of gravity of 32 feet per second per second. The force of gravity is caused by the curvature of space according to Einstein's theory of relativity. The aliens tune into the gravity field of the planet as a beacon signal to home in on it. Betty Andreessen lived close by to Gerald. So he called her and asked if they knew the answer to that riddle. She said they had not figured out what it meant. Even some NASA scientists worked on the clues and got nowhere. Ever since that phone call, there has been a very rewarding friendship between Betty and Gerald and also her husband, Bob Luca. Betty had married Bob, who also is an abductee. A few years went by and Gerald felt led to write the book, The Etheric Ocean. It's as though he was inspired to write it. In the book, he speaks about an etheric realm similar to the classical ether that was believed to exist until the early 1900s when it was wrongly done away with by Einstein's theory of relativity. He describes how this ether is actually our mind, and is the mind of all living species in the universe. It is the unifying place of all energies. That ever elusive place that men of orthodox science with a purely physical point of view, such as Einstein's, look for, but cannot find. In the metaphorical sense, it is the resting place where opposites meet. The place between negative and positive, matter and spirit the coming together of male and female, the meeting place of God and the devil. It is the crossing place from one era or age to another. In this sense, it is symbolized by Jesus' cross when he crossed from the Judeo to the Christian age. In the Christian belief, Jesus is the mediator between God and man, and he said he is the way to the Father. In the true sense, he is symbolizing the etheric doorway to other worlds in the universe. Keep these words in mind about the crossing place because Gerald will show this very thing is what the symbolism of the Barbary Castle Crop Circle is saying. In a final sense, it is a very real place in nature known as the universal mind. He explains how the aliens are evolved to a degree where they are able to maneuver their UFOs by controlling them with their spiritual mind. They're able to make the craft sort of dissolve or dematerialize into this basic ether. They can dissolve into the ether and instantly reappear out of it anywhere in the universe. In this book, Gerald also described the workings of the alien's craft, In Betty's first book, it was said that during an abduction, she was shown how the alien's craft was constructed, and under hypnosis, she was able to draw how it looked. You see her doing this in this slide. Her book showed these drawings, and through these drawings, Gerald was able to describe how their craft worked. While he was doing research for his book and looking for the drawings, he happened to turn to page 139 the page where the beings were talking through Betty and noticed the statement that counting three and four was something about a door and it was going to be opened. Gerald was surprised and realized that his book is all about this door. He started to realize what was happening when he read the statement that there is an even flow and waves are being sent out. It was obvious to him then that he was able to understand about the ether and how the craft worked because he has been tuned into these waves from this flow.